Hello and welcome to Dell's Gaming and this is from the Depths Designer and in this episode, um, since someone suggested that I talk like I'm on a cooking show, I might as well invite you now to the From the Depths Galley. So what are we cooking today? Well, in this episode I want to do a bit of a build, which is the whole cooking process in From the Depths, apart from blowing when you uh, uh, burn things, destroy them. Um, so. For the campaign, I've set myself some ideas, and I do like building sort of historically inspired ships. So I am going to go through one of my builds, and we'll pick up on a couple of items that I'm using for my current builds, just to show my building philosophy, what I look at and how I build my historical ships in relation to what they're going to be doing in the campaign and history and explaining things etc. And some of the bits I'll go a little bit more in depth into during the build as providing I remember. Most of it will be a time lapse on some of it. Um, someone said about doing a stream about building um, frankly, I take far too long to do builds. It's better for me to record it and edit it later. Maybe for some things I might do a stream at some point um, if people like it. Um, maybe in a... but not for this. I, I, I spend far too long mucking around with builds put to um, uh, stream it, really. Anyway, so, idea. Um, historical build. So the first thing we're going to do is look at, I'm looking at um, uh, German uh, Kaiserlich Marina level builds, ships pre-World War One. at this moment is where we in the campaign. Now I have a few more builds already done, so my next level is go and find a, a, a ship, generally I use wiki Wikipedia is a good source, it, at least it lists things, and then I go and find some pictures and look at other sources as well if something's a little bit um, uh, unclear. And um, what I've picked at the moment, something that will fit in, is, a, is an armoured cruiser, uh, which eventually becomes like what in more modern parlance became the heavy cruiser. So the one I've chosen is the um, um, Prince Albert Adalbert, um, the British English of that is Albert, the British Adalbert. So that was a armoured cruiser of the Kaiser Lickham Marina. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a picture of it and say, does it look interesting? So the main picture I've got, and I'm going to pick a few things out of there immediately that I like the looks of that I will try to, that will inspire me. Now, one quick thing. I'm not building replicas. Um, I'm crap at using mimics and that type of thing. So I'm gonna be inspired by, by this, but I'm not gonna try and make it look exactly like this. So things that, that um, intrigue me, we've got the three funnels. Um, these um, Colling, Colling Tower and the mast. There's a, there's a little area on the masts and the uh, searchlights on the top. They, they seem to, intrigue me a little bit. I look at the spec of the um, system and this one has um, it's nothing too unusual but it's like a, a lead into other um, cruisers and heavy cruisers as you go forward. So this has got two turrets, one at the rear, one at the uh, one at the front, one at the rear with dual 8.3 inch uh, main battery guns and then it's got um, a secondary battery of uh, 5.9 15 centimeter guns and then a whole load of 8.8 three and a half inch guns and some torpedo tubes um, torpedo tubes I'm not worried about and the armor wise it's armored so it's got about the main belt is 3.9 inches and turrets are about 5.9 inches now in my game in my sort of head I work out that um, Less than three inches usually means it's a sloped bit of alloy, so that's your light cruiser. If you're a three inch type of armor, this is four inches, then you're looking at a, a block of metal. So for every three inches, I do a block of metal backed by something. So I'm gonna have this as, as fairly much a, a metal beam hull 
for most of the belt with it going into slopes and less maybe with a backing of some um, uh, wood and or um, armor decking as a backing just to give it a little bit but we're heading in that sort of region so it's not massively armored um, but it's, it's better than light cruisers so that's the information I've taken other th key bits I'm looking at speed 20 knots which although not again historically accurate I try to convert over to meters a second really it should be half so 20 knots should actually be 10 meters a second but in the game that's a little slow so I'm gonna put it around the 20 meters a second I think will be adequate um, other simple things that I'll try to do it had three screw propellers uh, with triple expansion steam engines so that will be what I'm looking at in this particular build other bits um, from I'll, I'll go and look at some other uh, pictures now one good important one is where possible I like looking at line drawings now this is a line drawing for the Prince Adalbert and you'll see there's got the turrets um, you got this slightly stepped hull i.e. The, the top turret is slightly higher than the lower turret or the rear turret sorry and you've got all of these secondary guns clustered in the middle now this is something that drew me to this it's quite interesting to try and build so that is something i'm going to try and reproduce that type of um cluster of guns in the center and that will be where also my armor is uh, maximized to cover those and the main guns um lots of little secondary guns around about um, so that's a key factor I, I will also go and look at other pictures that are available um, where possible just to get some other ideas uh, such as the layout so you can see in, a, in another one um, how the the turrets you, you got those turrets and uh, uh, which have got secondary guns in there which is quite interesting and the secondary casements are below it so it's got quite a step there's a quite a stepping there um, on the design of, of the hull uh, to allow those gu those guns to be able to fire forward um, etc so there, there's a there's a yeah defined step so what we'll and the center gun is almost fixed it's almost um, not going to have much angle at all uh, to it so yeah I will try to sort of pull that across um, in some way okay so let's get on with the start of the build the key bits on this I think will be um, the armor design armor layout the um, just as a basis um, also one other bit on because this is inspired not a uh, an absolute uh, historical version so um, when it comes to height and width I'm gonna basically try and make it a little smaller than the uh, technically the main ship would have actually been and that is because in the game if you make it basically too big um, it puts the volume up which makes it difficult in uh, the game to to basically uh, bring it in without it uh, basically too too big too powerful I, I, I found that they, they, their volume makes them awkward in battles or can do uh, but that's my particular view so a couple of different ways of building this now because I've got to fit that the, the key bit here is going to be that cluster of guns in the center the main main gun at the front um, the conning tower bridge and the funnel so what I will do now there's usually different people have different ways of where they start but for me at this moment what I'm gonna do is start with that main deck which is where the um, main front gun is and the level of the uh, bridge and fit in 
possibly the the main gun and, and work backwards from there a little bit and uh, let me just bring that up again so I can see what I'm doing yeah that looks about right and then um, then once I've got that roughly laid out I'll know where I can put the centralized gun so that will be the process so let me get into a position where I've got space for the front guns and I've got the bridge sort of laid out so my first sort of decision point is actually this front gun because I want a not too big a gun I'm gonna make this a cram cannon um, and it's going to be a dual cram cannon but I don't want the top to be too massive and it's not going to be overly powerful it's not be equivalent to an 8 inch gun um, so actually I'm going to hold out on this building and we're going to go back to our design platform and quickly build a potential cram cannon so um, let's see what we're going to have we'll have a 3 axis turret uh for extra what should we say extra, extra capacity um now uh, extra strength is the word i'm looking for we'll just set a few little requirements that i normally set on these and there we go um that's about normal for me okay so i this isn't going to be large and based upon previous sort of systems are done I think somewhere in that region should be okay and then we're gonna build the cram cannon on this now I'm gonna have although this has got eight inch guns and I could use APS on this uh, quite happily uh, to be honest this is gonna be a main gun let's just set that to one um, I'm going to set this to be a cram, you know, a cram cannon because it just happens to be fitting in with the theme of and my other ships because they're all basically cram cannon armed. And also, I'm going to try and keep the initial barrels quite close together. And then let's see, is that going to be? Yeah, I think I'm going to have enough there put one more down there now my idea I'm, I want a, a cap on this so this is going to be a, a just here I'm gonna have a little um, cap that's where the deck level will be um, this acts as a little protection so if the top gets hit then the underneath might be protected these are not highly explosive these cram connectors uh, luckily um, so they've got a little bit of armor and health so if we get an explosion at the top we shouldn't have an explosion going to all the way to the bottom that's the idea doesn't always work but we're gonna go for it right so um, a basic c construction of a standard cram uh, elevation um, which gives us our obviously elevation and then a couple of motor barrels so that the gun moves fairly quickly then some barrels um, how many have I got there one two three um, yeah that and recoil suppression I think that'll be big enough now I can't go small down to an 8.3 um, as I say this is inspired not historically accurate so we're going to stick with obviously with the 1000 meter millimeter you know one meter bore yes that's not historical but I'm not really worried about that I'm gonna put a um, predictor in there there we go um, that will work for one of the guns which is fine now what we need to do we're gonna have to armor the front of the turret up but what I'm gonna do first is put some packers on here now the packers are what contains the ammunition etc on the guns uh, and packs them into the central system in, into the actual shell 
Um, can I put an extra one in there? No, I'll leave it like that. Now, one other bit is I'm not done going to do sharing on this gun. I'm going to keep it fairly, fairly modest and fairly simple. I might go back a bit. One other thing, I'm looking at the design of the turret on that picture and it had a nice sloping front and quite a large um, section to the rear. So I'm going to use that in the design just to put a few extra packers in and see what we can do in that regard. I don't think that will matter too much. I go something like that. No, I don't like that one. Let's see if I can get... That's a, that's a better design. Okay, and these ones go up. I just need an, an upward on those ones. Okay, now I'll put some... I'm also, I'm not going to share the payloads on here. I could um, put ones down the centre here. But what I... And, the reason I don't like that is that it basically, um, when you click there, the, they, the, the two guns don't pack equally. There is a difference. Um, I'll just show, show what I mean by that here. If I put one in the centre, you'll find one of the guns here, which has got the lowest ID, is showing under cram settings as having 19 and 1 shared. And this one has 19, none shared. Um, but uh, let, let me just sort out something so these have got some sort of stats. And we'll just um, give it, we'll say we'll set it up like that. So, okay. Um, this one, reload time 44.67. This one, 4467. How will they, will they end up with the same AP? 40, they, they have actually at this moment. Okay, I'm going to give it a go. Let's see what goes. Now, the reason that in the past I've not done this is that the stats come out differently for each of the guns. So let's see if there's a, diff a change in um, the way it handles um, this system. And we'll see if we get different stats for each of the cannons. So, okay, uh, let's see, not one there. I'll put some up here and then maybe on the back. So that's got quite a few. I think those ones on the back might be a few too many. How many have we got there? Because what I want is fast firing guns here. 34, 6 shared. Okay, let's work, work our way through. And so, what I want to do is have a gun which has quite good penetration, but low packing weight and pretty good HE and a little bit of fragments. So if I apply that to cannon and the fragmentation is going to be 150. So that's with 34 packers. So we've got a reload time of 12 seconds. AP 24, that's good. Let's see where this actually ends up. Now what I'm actually going to do though to make it a fast firing gun is 2207, yeah, is reduce the minimum packing time. So if we take the minimum packing time say down to 50%, There we go. Um, now what that means is that will effectively reload. Well, we've got a reload time of 7.64. And also um, when it goes to firing, it will it basically will roll it, reload quicker. <laughs> um, if we look at this one here, that's still got 1159 cram settings, uh, 50%. Oh, that frag didn't go through, so let's try and get that. 
nope those settings are not holding over is it because it's this is one's using shared this is the 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 reason i don't like using shared so let's try and get exactly 116611 11 uh, let's just make sure those numbers are correct again how are we 166111 that's right let's change that around 11166 11 166 11 see why will that not apply that and it's going to be because it's using the and now I'm not getting there because it's six shared it, it just can't change some of those values it is uh, so I'm gonna end up with different values between the two guns yeah I'm gonna end up with different values so and I don't like that I want the guns to be identical so I'm gonna if you're not worried about having the guns identical then to get better good old tetris cram tetris fill those gaps up basically i for, for good or bad i do care about that so um i'm gonna fill in these gaps uh with a bit of heavy armor just to fill that up there we go now the two guns if we go here and if i go uh, let's put that up to Will that take 66? So t it's 27, so it's a little bit less on the... Um, actual packed area, 66. So it's the HE is going to be a slightly different. Did that just change just as I came off? No, it didn't. Sometimes I see it and I think it suddenly changed. So we've got 8.5 will be the reload time inaccuracy 0 0.37 27 ap ap is quite good on that actually um, i can lower the ap a little bit actually so let's take that that down to actually let's just take this up to 70 well that didn't work as i wanted okay i've got something i'm happy with for want of a better word at this moment um not ideal but this quite good so 7.6 reload time which is good because most of the other 9 10 inch guns that i've got planned will be having around a 10 12 13 second um uh, reload time so this is going to be faster firing um yes it's going to have less kinetic damage when it only packs to 50 percent but the AP was still 19, that's not too bad. It's got good explosive damage, which is the main thing I'm after. This is not going against battleships, this is taking out deep water guard, wooden with some metal, medium to, to hard level ships. Um, I want rate of fire. So, okay, next I'm gonna sort out this turret and I'm gonna put two thicknesses of metal basically on the turret face um, and then try and do something with that sloping and angling I saw on the uh, picture and let's just make sure Oops, I went down too far there um, got to make sure I don't go down too far uh, <laughs> which I did I only want this this um, too high on the turret here don't don't want to go too high so next we're gonna bring up a couple of angles put two block in there so okay I'm talking to myself here um, and let's say the sides of the turret don't need to be as armored because we're facing facing the enemy or should be most of the time 
um, and then a little bit come round, bring this circle. So looking at the picture, the turrets were still circular at this time. They didn't have that more stereotypical the later of the German of having that angled sides, but they did start to have this angled top quite pronounced. So I'm going to put a uh, four meter slope on the top. Can't get one there. Let's try a transition four to three. Uh, three to four over this side yeah that looks okay and then we'll put a uh, is that gonna be a yeah we'll get away with that will a three meter slit angle go in there yep that'll be okay and inverted no we won't be able to use an inverted we'll have to go back with a two on actually actually what I want to do is on the back here I need to fill in this this gap here and have a bit of a squarish rear and angled again how many you got there three and a square rear um, square corner yeah I'm talking to myself whilst I am building up this section don't like that that I like there and finally there okay so that yeah that sort of fits in slightly off center for the angle again don't mind that let's just make sure everything's set to one yeah and set to one and what I will do is synchronize these two weapons so this one will be synchronized with the same cram on the turret try to um, fire at the same time um, or attempt the second later maximum uh, wait two seconds that should be fine um, if we give it a quick little um, firing test just to test the range and also the fire rate and then I can save it so let's just get my character over towards it there we go um, so there we go yeah okay that moves around okay should be able to fire whoops I'm on let's see firing yeah right. still packing still packing and firing again okay that's not too bad let's see about a range about there should do just put that on there see how far we've got to go back I think it will be about 3200 somewhere around that range which would be fine I'll must be set it a little bit lower for on the uh, controller just to be on the safe side I mean firing at this range would be yeah, 3,003, 3,005. So we're sitting at 3,002. Bring that off there. So 3,200. Yeah, 3, um, height. So um, it would be able to get things just under the surface. So we're saying minus 20. And height wise, well, we don't want it trying to take out aircraft really, so we'll just set that to 200. And also, speed um, there's no, it's gonna go for quicker ships, but there's a limit, so we'll set that at 30 meters a second. I think that's that's still quite quick, but it will stop it going for aircraft. Engage, engage vehicles now, battleships. I'll set this quite high. This, uh, I think, I'll set it at 500 smaller ships than that the secondary guns will deal with and also don't fire unless you've got a, at least a 20 meter detection error minimum you know so it's got to be it's got to have seen it to a degree um yeah that should do um everything else so now whoops what i will do i didn't actually paint this we'll have to sort out the painting let me just paint this up so because it will be easier to paint it now than wait for later so if I go to my and select number four and just make sure that everything is painted here 
Um, also with, I'm doing it not necessarily the easy way here. One thing you can do with painting if you want to make sure you get everywhere, if I go in here, is temporarily change your paint to something really weird. And now I can see where I missed or if I hit something that I don't want to uh, paint. So I only want to actually paint the turret. I don't want to paint the barrels on this. There we go. Only problem with using the spray can, although it's it's, it's, it's easy in many, in many respects, um, it doesn't automatically mirror. But that'll be fine. And now what I can do is go and change this number four back to where I wanted it which is basically there uh, that's my standard for the German weapon so now I save this as a sub object under the Kriegsmarine and then we'll use it in our main ship so now I've got the first gun in and the first thing I will do is um, just make sure it turns around and I haven't blocked something in. That's always a, a potential problem as you block something and uh, uh, basically your gun don't don't turn. Um, there is a few spaces I could have got more, a few more blocks on here. Not too worried about that at this moment. Um, let's just make sure it turns. So we just make sure everything turns around. Full 360. Yep, that's fine. Not finished with it yet though, because I need to fill in around the side and um, that's alright, but as it gets a little closer we need to go in one more, so I've got to get this correct, otherwise you can end up basically making it so that it doesn't turn, which is a bit of a problem. Now the easiest way is, is if you can just make it as uh, what's the right word uh, asymmetrical as possible it does help you when making these guns uh, there is a few one of the biggest problems I, I always find I have is I put a gun in and you find it doesn't turn because you have accidentally put a block into the uh, one of the compactors etc um, that will be a common problem most I think most people that that the guns come across at some point in their building uh, process of you know the turret that will not turn. Um, I hate it, so I tend to test as soon as possible. So I've given this a one metal armor thickness, and basically I'll be able to copy that. Um, when I put the rear gun in and this will be a little extra armor this metal um, for my main guns just to stop anything coming through now and there'll be a bit of a space and then the external armor although on these it's well, I've marked off roughly where I think the hull is going to be so yeah I think it's gonna be this armor's gonna be fairly tight up against this uh, front gun turret so next stage is I'm going to approximate where the bridge is going to be and then start sort of planning for these side turrets because the side turrets one problem is they're going to need a bit of a cutting before the main because they're casement there's got you've got turrets and casements um, they need a bit of gap before you like a like a, a cutout so they can fire forward um, otherwise they'll only be able to fire at an angle which will be no good for what I have planned uh, as such so let's let me um uh, yeah let's let me build where a rough idea of where the bridge is going to be based upon those pictures um, and work backwards from there so having got this first part of the front sort of fitting in with the shape um, and outline of the ship as intended. I've now got the position for the, this basically the secondaries that I'm going to go and they're, they're going to be a, a little awkward, um, not awkward, but they're going to be a key feature of this 
big centralized um, set of casements and two turrets so let's see now the turrets themselves they're also going to set the how far this comes out to ensure that those turrets can still fire forward now I have got a already got a sub object somewhere let me just go and find that so this is the turret I got ready if I just put it here just for a moment so I can look at the size it's gonna be so this is a hundred and fifty mil turret so I'm gonna it needs two below and I want it a little bit below so I need to go down let's say three or four from here and it needs enough in the center for the casement and I have got a um, so the casement is going to be a sort of similar size the um, yeah so um, yeah, I need to just work out a bit of space this is, this is where it gets a little bit more complex when you've got to fit in complex shapes basically so I need to allow some space in the center and I'm going to use some light alloy to give us a bit of stability uh, sorry stability some stiffness for this section because um, we don't have a load of casements on here um, so we don't want it getting one hit and the whole lot just um, goes kablooey um, so there we're okay now I can bring this in so my my I need to come out to be able to sh hit forward it's got to be on that line the bottom of the gun now I can have it sticking out a little bit but obviously I'm gonna need to have at least one block that side to protect there so um, and where what level do I want this gun firing I don't want it at that level I want it to come down to so the guns shooting out one below the main gun yep that'll be fine uh, oh that actually because of that there I might be able to trim this down a little bit, take off some of this last level here, or I've got to bring it down an extra level. Hmm. So that's the first part of the build done, uh, with all the secondary weapons and the casement guns. The casements took quite a bit of fiddling around, especially to make sure they still rotate to a reasonable angle. Now size-wise, this is, compared to the picture, taller but most of that's because of the casement guns and the turrets you know reality these would be one two meters high I'm having to make them three and obviously allow a bit of space now um, some of it still needs a bit of potential uh, some of these smaller casement guns these are 88 millimeter casements um, and deck guns now the deck guns at the back I'm going to use them as sort of a flak gun give it a little bit of flak cap capability uh, potentially um, at least they've got a, a higher arc and a good field of fire for taking out any aircraft that would be my thought but yeah there's a lot of secondary guns here um, to take out small ships which is going to be one of its primary tasks so I'm going to set up a secondary um, AI for all of the smaller guns, the 88s, and they will basically specifically target small, close, uh, fast ships or planes. And then I think I'll leave the 150s on the primary, firing a lot of HE at the target to, you know, um, as was common, take off any of the surface stuff. But I think I've got close to the basic view it's a little taller and wider than would be you know if I was going for an actual proper build but that's because of as I say the the size I'm having to work with but yeah I'm not unhappy with what I've um, come up with so far so next we'll be putting in the front I think the bow complete the bow and the stern and then I can put in the uh, rest of the central armor the main belt that uh, hopefully the waterline will be about here 
so I've got to put the rest of the hull in and make sure it floats about that level in a in a level calm sea and I think that will be about correct so, um, this level or a little bit below will be ideal um, armor wise I haven't gone over the over the top a few places have got thick areas like here but most areas will be one metal and then one a deck plate just to act as a bit more as, as a, like a, a, a second bit of armor so this don't forget this isn't a battleship this is an armored cruiser um, and then once I've got the hull done I can look at propulsion and what we're going to do with a steam engines but almost there 